The appointment of David Graveney as the first employee uh, was a massively significant uh, issue and uh, development for the, for the company and for the organisation. Um, it meant for the first time that we had somebody who was wholly dedicated to developing the PCA um, and it was something that uh, Harold Goldblatt, who'd been a previous uh, vice president, uh, had had he pushed for that, and he was the person who said, "This is something we can do. This is something we should do, and something that we can actually afford to do, and we can afford to pay the, the salary that we needed to for David." You have to start somewhere. These were baby steps in this in the development of the organisation and the development of the business, but we had to start somewhere. And having David in to actually really promote the game, promote the association, was very significant. However, it did have its issues because soon after uh, being appointed the chief executive of the of the PCA, I was then offered the position to be a national, well, a selector, not general selector, a selector. Uh, seemed to be quite a good fit um, at that stage because the PCA job meant that I want, needed to get out and see players. And if I was going to cricket grounds during the summer, then selecting, that, that could easily be an extension of that. Uh, so for a couple of years, that was fine. Um, but I did, I was beginning to realise that actually, once you have a, a, in any way an ECB tag on you, how can you possibly also represent the players at the same time? And that was brought to its peak when I was offered the, the position of being chairman of selectors. And, uh, you know, I, I, within the organisation and within the membership, um, that, uh, you know, I definitely there were raised eyebrows and actually more than that. I think players, people thought that actually that's not a very good fit at all. Uh, and that uh, quickly led to the sensible position of me standing down and Richard taking over. And it was very difficult, to, I think, to reconcile that, that conflict of interest. Um, I, I know I've spoken to David about this quite a lot and you know he knows that he had to manage those conflicts of interest and it was a difficult thing to do. Uh, I think it did get to a point when it was uh, a bit unsustainable. Um, for lots of reasons. The role that he was doing as chairman of selectors and as manager of the England team around the World Cup just got bigger and bigger. The role that Richard Bevan was doing as managing director of the PCA got bigger and bigger and it came very clear that you couldn't actually have you know, David trying to do both of those two jobs and it actually a, a separation was, was a natural and inevitable thing to happen. And David carried on doing the chief exec, uh, sorry, the chairman of selectors role and then Richard moved into the chief executive's role. My attempt to uh, tread a fine line between being a selector and, and the chief executive was probably a step too far, um, and, I, and maybe in hindsight we should have played that differently. David Graveney invited me to um, a, a PCA reps meeting, which I remember very well, uh, and I sat next to one Tim O'Gorman, and he was just retiring from Derbyshire, uh, from playing, and Tim motivated me in saying, well, why don't we look and see what else we could do to help the guys? And around the table, there were people like Angus Fraser, and there was a lot of, uh, could we do this? Could we Could we do, could we build a PCA? Could we do more things? And I found uh, the meeting really motivating, and that was probably the impetus for me in getting involved, and uh, conversations I had with David Graveney, the then secretary, um, and really, it was a lack of money to be able to deliver a lot of the ideas that people had. Um, and it was about the same time that, that David Graveney was chairman of England Selectors, and perhaps um, it start, started to get a, a maybe a little bit of bad press or his own, you know, his own feelings about wearing two hats. You know, sitting as, as chairman of Selectors, but then being secretary or chief executive of the union at the time. Um, so I think. With that going on and, and Matthew Fleming finishing his playing career and standing down as chairman, uh, the four of us met um, at Matthew Fleming's offices in London and that was when we, we then discussed that the, sort of the structure of the, the PCA needed to move forward uh, and the, the thought of Richard coming in and, and being a new chief exec of the whole group um, sort of coincided with myself taking over from Matthew as chairman.